What did this mouse and this bat have in common? They're going to help me illustrate a very important economic principle. Welcome to the Final Wager's Guide to Game Theory. Music fans will instantly recognize these two drawings, as rudimentary as they may be. This mouse represents the band Radiohead, and this bat represents the Wu-Tang Clan. These are two of the most popular groups of all time. So what do they have in common? Well, they both use what's known as the first mover advantage. The first mover advantage is one type of competitive advantage that a company or an individual can gain from being the first to claim a space. Now, this reward could be market share, or goodwill in the press and with customers, or in some cases, getting a strict monopoly over certain natural resources like oil or gas. How did these two bands take advantage of this concept? No pun intended. In 2007, you might recall that Radiohead unveiled its new album, In Rainbows, and said, hey, we're not going to sell this in the stores, we're going to sell it online, but you can pay what you want. If you think this album is going to be worth 20 bucks, go ahead, pay that. 10 pounds if you're in the UK, great. If you want it for free, take it. We don't care. This was hugely successful for Radiohead, and they made a lot of money. One consequence of the first mover advantage is that other competitors will come in and try to replicate your success. We saw this after Radiohead had such a great release. Other bands said, hey, Radiohead made so much money, I'm going to try to do the same thing by charging people what they want to pay. Well, it didn't work that way. Radiohead had sobbed up all the press, and by the time other bands came in, it wasn't novel anymore. We'll see what happens with the Wu-Tang Clan. Last week, Forbes reported that the Wu-Tang Clan would release its new album, The Wu, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, with just one copy. It would be housed in an engraved silver and nickel box, crafted by the artist Yaya, whose work has been done for royal families and rich people around the world. Before selling the album for an amount expected to be well into the seven digits, the group is going to take it on tour, having listening parties at museums, galleries, festivals, and the like. Really putting art back into music. It's a really cool idea. Now let's look at what happens when someone uses the first mover advantage at a cost to themselves. In February, the drugstore chain CVS announced that it would no longer sell cigarettes in any of its stores. Now this would come at a cost of $2 billion a year, but it also got a lot of good press coverage, and it might get a lot of goodwill from consumers who maybe don't want to shop at stores that sell cigarettes. Its two main competitors, Walgreens and Rite Aid, have a choice to make now. If they were to discontinue selling cigarettes, the other one would reap most of the benefits, but the one that discontinued the cigarettes wouldn't get the same press that CVS got. So it's an interesting situation. It turns into a game of chicken, which I'll discuss some other time. Now let's look at one more example where being first to the market might actually hurt you because it's very easy for competitors to come in and rip you off. This last one is very near and dear to my heart because I've been addicted to both of these games over the past week. Threes and 2048. The object of both is similar. They're both tile-based games on a grid. The object is to push two like numbers together to form a bigger number. In threes, you're working with 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, and so on. In 2048, it's powers of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, so on, up to 2048. Once you reach that, you win. Now, 2048 was the first game that I found. A friend of mine put it on Facebook and it was instantly hooked. Eventually, I figured out a strategy, beat the game, and completely lost interest. Thank God. Until a friend told me about Threes, an app that was released in January to near universal acclaim. Now, it's the game on which 2048 was based, but it differs in several important ways. For one, it doesn't look like some computer science kid in high school put it together. It's very well done with monsters that move into each other and make noises and do all these other cool things. Very well thought out. In an attempt to cement Three's status as the original tile-moving game, the creators released a trove of emails and other documents last week showing how much thought actually went into developing it. In some ways, this saga reminds me of the story of Columbus and the Egg, which goes a little something like this. Christopher Columbus is sitting around a table with a bunch of guys, and one of them asks him, Hey, Christopher, why should you be so famous for discovering the new world? Someone would have come along and done it eventually, right? And Christopher says, Gentlemen, here's an egg. Make it stand on end. And they pass around the table, and these are wise guys, but they can't figure it out. Christopher takes it back, 
puts it on the table, takes a spoon, wraps the spoon on top of the egg, the bottom of the egg breaks a little bit, and it sits straight up. And all of the men at the table immediately understand what he's going for. Now that someone else has done it, it's obvious. And that's what's happening with 2048. Luckily, the guy who created 2048, the very popular version online, is not monetizing his content out of respect for threes, which in the world of businesses is very infrequently the case. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Just tying some real world stuff in with game theory. Hope to bring you more soon on The Final Wager.